All right, so now we're going to just work some exercises. <clears throat> so here we're supposed to find the domain, the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. All right, so to do that, we need a factor, of course. And so let's re rewrite this as x over, this is the difference of squares, so it's x plus 3, x minus 3. Okay, so now that makes it much easier. We can set each of those factors here in the denominator equal to zero to get our vertical asymptotes as well as the domain. And so here x is equal to a negative three, here x is equal to a positive three. So our domain is gonna be all real numbers except x equals negative three and x equals positive three. Okay, and with that we get our vertical asymptotes, and they're going to be at x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 3, okay? Now, horizontal asymptote, well, now we have to look at our powers. Here we have a 1, here we have a 2. So the denominator is greater than the numerator, which then tells us then we get a y equals 0 horizontal asymptote. So if you remember back, there was a page where we had, you know, x is uh, great, or the denominator is greater than zero, denominator is less than zero, and denominator is equal to zero. Well, when the denominator is greater than the uh, numerator, not zeros, but the denominator is greater than the numerator, then we get the y equals zero. Now, if they're equal, then we use our coefficients in front. And when they're not, then we have to do that division and figure out what it would be, okay? So that was that one. Uh, we've got our domain, the vertical, and the horizontal asymptotes. So that should be all we need. Now for this one, uh, this one's not quite as nice because this one, we actually have to do some factoring, it looks like. Well, our numerator is pretty easy. That's x plus one, x minus one. Now the denominator uh, looks like we have an x, and when we take out the x, we have x squared plus 9x plus 14. And so now we need to factor the denominator. Well, that looks like a plus 2 and a plus 7. So it wasn't as bad as it looked initially. Okay. Now our domain is going to be all real numbers except, and here we have x equals 0, here we have x equals negative 2, and here we have x equals negative 7. Okay, so it can't be any of those. Now that gives us our vertical asymptotes. And that's x equals 0, x equals negative 2, and x equals negative 7. Now remember, if anything canceled, then we would get rid of that asymptote if there was none left in the denominator. If we canceled the numerator and denominator, you know, that would be gone. It would be a, 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 a value that was your, I can't think of the, the 0 disconnect. And so that would be that, so we wouldn't have to worry about it. But this time, all of, them, all of them stayed, and so we'd have that. Now, horizontal asymptote, well, again, 2, 3, the denominator's bigger, so y equals 0 is our horizontal asymptote. Okay, so that's all they were asking here. And so we didn't have to draw pictures. We didn't have to do anything else. We just had to basically do that little bit of factoring. Now this one we even have less because all they want are the x and y intercepts. Okay, well, again, we're gonna have to kind of factor those. So uh, this one, it looks like we're gonna have x, x, factors of seven are one and seven, they add together to eight, so that looks good. Now here we have x and x, they're gonna be plus and plus. Two factors of 30 that add to 11, well, that would be six and four. Five. All right, so nothing cancels. So our y intercepts, well, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute x equals zero into this. And so then we're going to get basically uh, one times seven. So we're going to have seven in the numerator and six times five. So that's going to be uh, 30 in the denominator. And so that's going to be what y was equal to. And so we'll get zero, seven over. 
Okay. Now, how do we solve the other one? Well, we, we plug this numerator equal to zero. So x plus one, x plus seven equals zero. So we get x equals negative one and x equals negative seven are the two x intercepts. Okay, so we get the two x intercepts and we get the one y intercept. Okay, and that's all we needed to do, find the intercepts. All right, <clears throat> what about the next one? Um, the next one looks like we have to do a little bit of factoring here. Uh, looks like 94 divided by two, is that possible? Uh, yeah, that's 47, but that's not a very nice number. So uh, let's first do this one here. So that's gonna be three times x squared minus four. So that's gonna be three times x plus two, x minus two. Now, if we did this one, we took it out, that was a negative two times x squared uh, minus 47. So that really didn't help us a lot because that's not a perfect square, but we can still uh, get our items we need. So uh, we can say, well, when uh, y intercept, uh, we set x equal to zero. Well, we could use the original thing and plug in x equals zero and we get 94 divided by 12. And 94 divided by 12, well, that's going to give us two. So that's going to give us equal to 47 over six. So we'll have a zero, 47 over six for our y-intercept. And our x-intercept, we're going to set that equal to zero. And so basically, we are going to get, you know, the x squared equals 47. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 47, okay? Because you're going to divide by 2, basically. And so then you get x squared equals 47, and then you get that. And so we'll get a 47 comma 0. Oh, where'd the square root go? And negative square root 47 comma 0, okay? Those are going to be our 2x. And that's going to be our y. Okay, so a little different than we've seen before as far as on this one with x, we get the square roots, but you know, we can still approximate that if we had to plot that on, on, a, on a graph itself. All right, so we're supposed to describe local and in behavior of the function. So basically, I think what we need to do is we need to have to graph this. And so if we graph it, what do we have? Well, we're gonna have a vertical asymptote. At x equals uh, six. Okay, so let's start drawing what we have as we go. All right, so we have a vertical asymptote somewhere down here at x equals six. Okay, um, then what else do we know? Let's get our intercepts. Uh, so 2x equals zero, so y, uh, y is zero here. So we get uh, the x and y both equal to zero in this case. So that's kind of a, a nice one. So we get x equals zero, and so we get zero, zero. So we can plot that point. Let's plot that as dark, a dark color. Okay, now what else do we have? Um, so that's going to be our x and our y intercept. Uh, do we have any horizontal asymptotes? Yes, horizontal. Now these are the same, okay? So because they're the same, our horizontal asymptote is y equals 2 over 1 or just y equals 2. All right, so let's draw that one in. And who knows where that two is. Again, we're just sketching because all we're supposed to do is describe the local and in behavior of the function. All right, so now we have that. Maybe we'll draw our actual function in a different color. Let's do maybe a green. And so we have enough to get this. Uh, yeah, I think so. <clears throat> okay, so uh, here we have this is going to be a multiplicity of one. And so being a multiplicity of one, we're going to have something that is going to be like the following. It's going to be there like 
this and this, or it's going to be this and this, okay? Now, because we have this here point and we have this horizontal asymptote here, I'm going to say this comes up through here like that. And remember, this is also a multiplicity of one at that value. And so because it's a multiplicity of one, it goes straight through. It doesn't bounce off or anything else. And so that's going to come up like that. Now that means this one comes down. Well, then we hit that asymptote there. And so we have that. So our, our graph is going to look something like this. And so, you know, here, as x approaches negative infinity, uh, y is, uh, or f of x, I guess, f of x is going to approach our 2. And as x approaches, now we were going to 6 from the left, f of x is going to approach negative infinity. And here, as x approaches 6 from the right, f of x approaches positive infinity. And here, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches, and that was our 2. Okay, so we could have said as x approaches plus or minus infinity, f of x equal uh, approaches two, or we could have it, you know, in two pieces like that. So we kind of show all four points possible here. Okay, and so that was going to describe our local and in behavior of our functions at all the different places where it is. And again, first we kind of had to draw our graph, and then after that we were able to kind of label what it was. Okay. All right, so with this one, we have to do the same thing, which means then we're going to have to find all the pieces, which means we're going to have to do some factoring and all that before we can get to there. So let's factor this, if possible. Uh, so it looks like two factors of three that add to four, and it has to both be negative, so x minus one, x minus three. Same with five, except it's going to be one's plus, one's minus. Uh, so it's going to be plus one and x minus five. So it's going to be minus four. Yeah, that works. And that's going to be minus four and then plus three. So yeah, that works. All right, so we're going to have vertical asymptotes. At what? x equals one, negative one, and x equals five, OK? So that works. Um, so our, that also gives us our domain. So our domain is all real numbers except x equals negative 1 and x equals 5. And I probably should have put that over here, but it didn't ask for it. And so here, basically, you know, our domain is all real numbers except x equals 6. Okay, so if we put our domain as well. All right, and so now our horizontal asymptote, those are equal. So horizontal asymptote. And that's going to be basically our y equals 1 because we have our numbers out here, both 1. Um, now, let's see, we can get our y-intercept, I guess, next. And so x equals 0, so y equals, and it's going to be a minus 1 times a minus 3, so it's going to be a 3. And we have a 1 times a negative 5, so it's going to be a negative 5. And so that gives us a 0, negative 3 fifths, OK? Now, our x-intercepts. All right, we're going to set our numerator equal to 0. So that's going to be uh, basically we're going to have uh, 1 and x equals 3. And so it's going to be 1 comma 0 and 3 comma 0. So those are our two x-intercepts based on those. And I think we might have enough to draw our graph. All right, so now let's start adding points. So we know 0, negative 3 fifths. So maybe let's mark these off with red so we can kind of see them a little better. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hopefully that's enough. Um, so zero, negative three fifths, so a little less than a half, so somewhere in there. Uh, then we have one zero. Oops. One zero. And three zero. And now vertical asymptotes, let's put those in. We have one at negative one. And we have one at x equals five, so we didn't make enough of those. So we have that one. Okay. And we have horizontal at y equals one. Okay. Now all of these are all multiplicity of one. And so if we think about that, that means when we have uh, asymptote, one's gonna come down like that, one's gonna come up. And when we have points on a X axis, they're all gonna come through. Just, they're not gonna bounce off. They're just gonna come through. All right, so now let's draw what we might have here. All right, so um, let's start in the middle because we have points here. And so we know that it has to be kind of contained within the left point here and the right point here. And it's gonna also be contained within this point here. It's not gonna go above that and then come back down. It's just gonna stay in here. And so this will come up something like this. It's gonna go through that point because it has a multiplicity of one. Then it's gonna come back through that point because it has a multiplicity of one and then it's gonna come down, okay? So that's kind of our, our main chunk of data points are right in this area. And then on the asymptotes, we know that this one's coming down, so that one has to be up here. And then we have this asymptote here and no other points. So that has to do that. And this one over here has to do the same thing, it has to do something like that. And again, we're just rough sketching this in. We're not getting points and getting every little data point. That's just kind of the rough sketch. And so now we need to kind of say what, what's happening at each of these points. So here we can say uh, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches, and that was going to be 1. Okay, so we can say approaches 1. And here as x approaches negative one from the left, f of x approaches infinity. And here, as x approaches negative one from the right, the negative, then f of x, oops, approaches negative infinity. And here, as x approaches, and that was one, two, three, four, five, from the left, f of x approaches negative infinity. Here, as x approaches the five from the left, I mean the right, sorry, uh, f of x approaches positive infinity. And as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches one. Okay, so again, with this one, we could have said, as x approaches plus or minus infinity, f of x approaches one, and got that all together. And then we could have just wrote all those other points in there as well, okay? So that was going to show us all the end behaviors of our graph after we found all of our points and did a rough sketch of what they look like. All right, so let's stop there. We'll come back with more.